Twin flame telepathy. Pretty exciting topic. Can there be telepathy with your twin flame? Can they hear what I'm thinking? Can I hear what they're thinking? A lot of you seem to be experiencing that actually. I hear this all the time from people that you seem to be able to feel things and know things that your twin flame is up to. We're going to talk about that in today's video. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Kurt. I'm the world's number one twin flame coach. I've personally coached over 7,000 twin flame students to date. I've got lots of success stories, you guys. I've got students who are married to their twin flame, having amazing breakthroughs. And of course, my twin flame permanently in my life. She even shows up on my YouTube channel from time to time. If you want to check that out, just go find my playlist on this YouTube channel. There's a playlist called The True Twin Flame Teachings. I'm all about the science too, guys. I think you'll find my take on Twin Flames refreshing because you can know for sure what the facts are. Guys, Twin Flames is real. You're not crazy. You're not making this stuff up. This is a real phenomenon. And because it's real, we can describe it. We can prove things about it. We don't have to make stuff up. You're not crazy if you can prove what's going on and what you're experiencing. Isn't that nice? Yeah, that's super nice, guys. So here's the thing with twin flame telepathy. Let's, let's first talk about the elephant in the room. Can that happen? Well, my answer is ish, right? So it depends on what you're talking about. Because see, there's really kind of two things that could be going on and people think that both of them are telepathy. So telepathy, what that really is, is when you experience information in your third eye chakra that you know is not coming from your own mind. And I'll explain that further in detail in a second. The other thing that could be going on is intuition, which comes from your higher self. It comes from the soul. Now, what does everybody, and I mean everybody, say about twin flames? It doesn't matter what they are telling you to do about your twin flame, what kind of advice they're giving you about your twin flame. Because let's face it, if you look around on the internet for long enough about twin flames, you're going to find a whole bunch of different advice about twin flames, which all seems to conflict and you're confused and I don't know who to listen to. But what's interesting is everybody, everybody, no matter what they're telling you, no matter what advice they're giving you, conflicting or otherwise, everybody's telling you twin flames are the same soul. Everybody. Well, yeah, it's because the term twin flame was originally invented to describe two people who are the same soul. That was the whole idea behind coming up with the term twin flame in the first place is it's two people who are the same soul. And that is absolutely true. And this shouldn't come as any surprise to any of us. You guys, we've known about reincarnation for millennia. This is old news. So why would you be surprised about meeting another incarnation of your soul? Your twin flame is another incarnation of your soul. The soul incarnates, guys. It does that. It exists beyond the mind and beyond the body. Really easy to understand. So this diagram represents basically, is it? So are we talking about twin flames with this diagram or are we talking about reincarnation? I don't know. What's the difference, right? So this big circle represents your higher self in heaven or the afterlife, which is really the before life, right? You could call it the energy part of the universe. It's where you go when you do the thing that we call die, right? You go to this higher plane, P-L-A-N-E, plane. You go to this higher plane of existence, which by the way, physics, is proving out the fact that these higher planes do exist and spiritual teachers have been talking about this for ever for millennia hermes trismegistus it's one of the basic laws of his teachings that there are these higher planes of existence 
And physics is starting to prove that these higher planes exist, although they don't quite realize fully yet what exactly it is that they are proving. You know, if you ask half of the science community, or if you ask the science community, half of them are going to tell you, yeah, there's no God, and that's not a thing, and that's quack science. And then the other half, they're going to tell you, yeah, that's probably what that is. <laughs> you know, so it's not really agreed upon in the science community what that is. They just know that it's there. Meanwhile, spiritual teachers that have been talking about this stuff for thousands of years in the first place are going, dude, we told you that these higher planes existed before you guys figured it out, before you even knew that there were any of them. How did we know that? Well, I don't know. <laughs> You guys probably know the answer as well as I do, right? It's a pretty obvious answer. So that's the higher self. That's your soul in heaven. Now, the other thing that's interesting, when you look at these higher planes, including in conventional science, they're going to tell you that from the perspective of these higher planes, there is no time. Albert Einstein is the one who realized that time is something that we perceive in the first person. We do experience linear time. We do experience past and future in the first person. That is true. However, from a third party perspective, that's not the case, is it? Past and future are happening simultaneously from the perspective of these higher planes. So these little red dots, of course, represent individual incarnations that you've lived, right? So like past lives, future lives, reincarnation. So from the perspective of your higher self, which is your true self, it's who you really are beyond the body and beyond the mind. Your soul, hmm? from the perspective of your soul, all of these individual incarnations, these physical people that you have been or will be, they're all happening simultaneously. Isn't that interesting? Now, this here, these two red dots, this is you and your twin flame. That's you and your twin flame. And by the way, this could be a future reincarnation here, being born in the year 1880. Guys, when you do the thing that we call die, you leave your body, you go back up here, you can go into the future, you can go into the past, it doesn't matter, right? Like in my next life, I want to reincarnate into the year 1940. Why not? That would be pretty awesome, actually. Get to grow up in the 1950s, uh, get to be a teenager in the 1960s, you know, maybe I could go to Woodstock, hang out with the Beatles too, and you know, I don't know, just maybe I'll get to meet Alan Watts, huh? Wouldn't that be cool? You know, I don't know, but that's a thing. That's a thing. So this is reincarnation. So I probably just gave you more questions than answers. <laughs> so this is just a super fast crash course in reincarnation and what twin flames are, because uh, this video really is about telepathy, but I wanted to do that little bit of setup so that we could talk about telepathy. If you've got more questions about everything that I've just discussed with you, go check out my other playlist called Twin Flame Science. There's a, there's a playlist on my YouTube channel called Twin Flame Science where I go much, much deeper into everything that we just talked about. Now, just a few minutes ago, I explained to you that telepathy is something that you you experience in your third eye chakra. And then there's this other thing called intuition, which is not really what we think of as telepathy. It's very simple, guys. Telepathy is thought. It's thinking, right? Intuition is knowing. It's spiritual. So here's the thing with telepathy. In your third eye, I'll tell you what it's like when I've experienced telepathy. Here's what I've experienced. I'll, I'll hear like a sound inside my head, right? It's, it's, if you could draw a line from like my two fingers where they're pointing, where they would connect in the middle of my skull in my head, you know what I'm talking about, your third eye, where you do all the thinking from, right? 
And there's been a few times in my life, several, five or six, where I heard voices and I knew it wasn't my voice. It was like there's a little loudspeaker inside my head. Okay? <laughs> really, it's like there's a radio or something, a little speaker playing sound inside my head. And I hear somebody talking to me. One time I picked up on the thoughts of a friend of mine who was across town. And I asked him about it later. And he said, yeah, that's exactly what I was thinking. And it was 2.30 when I was thinking that. And I was like, son of a gun, that's when I heard you. And he was very telepathic. Other times, I think it's my guardian angels that are talking to me. Or maybe it's my dead grandmother or something. <laughs> Somebody is communicating with me sometimes from the other side. And you can tell that it's not your thought when you hear stuff like that. Or maybe you'll see a vision, right? That's the thing about this is you know that it's not your thought, but you're like receiving sounds like voices and pictures from somebody else outside of you. And you just know that it's not. And it is, it's like that. It's like, there's like a television set inside your head and you hear and see things in there. So your, your chakras are, are little radio transmitter receivers. It's just most of the time, your, your third eye chakra, what it's receiving are your own thoughts and feelings. So there's another aspect to who you are metaphysically, who you are as an energy being. And it's this metaphysical energy body around you. Okay. If you've ever heard of somebody who can see auras, that's what they're looking at. What the aura seer is looking at is literally your ego mind, right? That's what that is. So think of like cloud storage, like computers, like Google, Apple, they've got like cloud storage, right? And there's little cookies on the computer that know where to access files from the cloud. Well, the same is true of you. Your body has synapses and like nerve endings and stuff inside of it that are programmed to access memories. So this, so your ego, your personality, which is a cloud of metaphysical energy around you, is where memories are stored. That's your cloud storage, okay? And this cloud here, in case you're wondering, this is my way of representing your soul, <laughs> right? That's what that is. Uh, and then of course, chakras, you know, I'm gonna make a video about that. Um, did I already do that one? Yeah, I think it's going to be actually this coming Wednesday here. I'm going to make a video about chakras. Am I right about that? I don't, I'm getting the dates mixed up, but you'll see it. If, if it's not already on my YouTube channel, it, it'll, it'll, it should be this following Wednesday. I'm going to make a video about chakras, what those are. Somebody asked me about that and I wanted to make a video about that. So that's telepathy. Telepathy is strictly thought. Okay, now intuition, and by the way, before I explain intuition in greater detail, which by the way, you can experience intuition with your twin flame all day long, no problem. The answer is yes, absolutely. But what's interesting about it is the way that telepathy works. Do you remember a few minutes ago when I said, I heard a sound or saw a vision in my head and I knew that it was not my thought. Because usually, like I said, usually what your third eye chakra is picking up on are your own thoughts coming from your cloud. Like I said, the chakra is a radio transmitter receiver. Okay, it's just that you're usually only picking up on your own thoughts. When you pick up on a thought from outside somewhere, they call that telepathy, and you just know that it's not your thought. But how did you know that? Think about it. No pun intended. You knew that it wasn't your thought, right? Well, how do you know? See, that's the thing with intuition. I've heard intuition described as 
You know that you know, but you don't know how that you know, but you know. <laughs> right? It's a knowing. Here's how I always explain intuition to people. It's exactly like deja vu in its characteristic of feel. Everybody's experienced deja vu, right? Deja vu is this weird, eerie knowing. And you're clear, you might not realize this at the time, but you're clear that it's not thought. Because here's the thing, you are thinking about the deja vu, about the knowing. Because what happens whenever you have deja vu? First thing that happens is you start thinking about it like, wait, have I done this before? Did I do this yesterday? This is deja vu. How do I know I've done this before? Maybe I did this yesterday. Ah, it's just deja vu, right? That's all thinking. Hmm, interesting. So there's knowing, the deja vu, and there's thinking about the knowing. Guys, those are two things, right? They're coming from two places. The thinking is coming from the mind, which is where you get telepathy, but the knowing, that's the soul, guys. That's the higher self. And here's the thing. If we look at, do I have it here? Yes, I do. So I kind of redid this diagram a little bit. So this is representing different moments in time in your one life right now, the one incarnation that you're in right now, right? These are all different points in time, okay? They're all, it's the same thing. Everything that you've done or will do is being experienced by your higher self all simultaneously. And again, conventional science says that's how that would work from the perspective of any higher plane. And again, what has everybody always said for thousands of years about where you go when you do the thing that we call die to a higher plane? And science is telling us that, yeah, these that there are higher planes and they are beyond time. And that's exactly what spiritual teachers have been saying about this stuff for ages and ages, right? Only they've been saying it for a lot longer than science has even been around. It's just science is kind of proving it. Well, anyway, that's why you're getting deja vu, guys, because you have done this before. The question is, what is you? What is that? What is me? What is the self? Who are you? Right, well, who you really are is this up here. Huh? That's who you really are. And intuition, it feels the same as deja vu. That's why I'm using deja vu as an example, because it's kind of hard to articulate. Thinking, I can just tell you thinking and you know what that is. But intuition, if you were to ask me, well, how would I know I was experiencing intuition if I was? It, it, it feels like deja vu. It's just the information is different. Okay, with deja vu, the information is, I've done this before. With intuition, the information is something about the future, something about another person, or something that's true for you. That's intuition. Deja vu, it's really just a form of intuition. Okay, they just gave it a special name or something. So that's intuition, and guess what? You and your twin flame are the same soul. That's literally you having another experience in another body. That's all this is, guys. So intuition, yeah, all day long, guys. You can have that weird knowing, intuition. You can know things about your twin flame. You absolutely can all the time. No problem. Now, what cannot happen with your twin flame is uh, bi-directional telepathy. So telepathy between twin flames is unidirectional, which means it only goes one direction. And uh, some of you, maybe you've seen this before. Um, I'm not gonna go too deeply into this. It, again, if you wanna know more about this, go check out my Science of Twin Flames playlist. And in particular, the video on there called What Are Twin Flames, where I explain why there is the push-pull with your twin flame. It has to do with this with reincarnation, it has to do with where each of you are along the plot line of all of the different lives that you've incarnated and reincarnated to. Just go check out my Twin Flame Science video. And again, in particular, the video called 
what are twin flames. But this is why they run, guys. This explains the twin flame push-pull, okay? You are more energetic than them, so your energy travels to them and pushes them away, all right? And it's because of the second law of thermodynamics, okay? The positive energy tends towards the negative energy. It pushes towards the negative energy, okay? That's why your twin flame is running. It's the second law of thermodynamics, okay? And that's the mind. So it's thoughts, emotions, and metaphysical energy. That's why I'm always telling you guys, don't pray for your twin flame. Don't focus on your twin flame. Don't try to do anything about your twin flame. Don't do the violet flame chant. Don't do healing for your twin flame. If you're going to do that, fine, but do it for you, okay? But when it comes to your twin flame, you don't need to do any of that stuff. You just remember who you are as a soul. Again, go, go check out my True Twin Flame Teachings playlist where I explain this over and over and over again, right? To how to get your twin flame to stop running, how to get them to stop rejecting you. You gotta go in here, guys. You have to release the physical twin flame person, the physical form of that person and go in here. You guys are the same soul. You gotta go into your soul, guys. But this is why that you cannot experience telepathic thoughts from your twin flame, but they can experience them from you. Intuition, yes. The knowing, the knowing of intuition, yes. All day long, no problem. Yes, you can do that. But telepathy, which is a metaphysical thing, it's thought. That cannot happen. And I've never observed it in all my years. 7,000 twin flame coaching students. Nobody's ever been able to verify that they've experienced telepathy from their twin flame. Only the other direction, even with my twin flame. But intuition, yes, all day long, guys. So that's the deal with twin flame telepathy and uh, intuition too. I hope... Uh, you found this video useful. See ya.